Well, good morning, June 1st, 2024. Today's the day of the Turner celebration. And first off is the Turner Fire District volunteer breakfast. Everybody's lined up and many are being served right now. And we're gonna have to get in there. Now that's a projection. Good morning, Pat. You're here again. Yes, I am. Every year. I try to be. That's good. I am a lightweight. Like What's the cost this year? Eight dollars. Same as last year. Eight dollars for adults, seven dollars for seniors, and members. I'm a senior. Yes. yes. Okay. Any change in the menu this year? No, nope. menu's the same. Thirteen dollars. Thank you very much. And what's your name? Christy? Christy, yep. Yes. It's my daughter. Oh, okay. Thanks for volunteering. Yeah. Okay. Okay, do I get my choice? Yes. How would you like your eggs? Uh, scrambled. Okay, and white or wheat toast? Uh, wheat. Perfect. I'll have you move Hello. Another volunteer. That's right. You're David. That's correct. That's my name too. Oh, nice to meet you, David. That's a great name. <laughs> yeah. What's up, David? This is your plate. Yeah, you're here again, Lawrence. I'm here again. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got so, you on Turner Celebration last right. year. Serving the community. Yeah. As always. That's good. Isn't it's that a neat breakfast? Thing. Yeah. That's a steaming hot breakfast. Yes, sir. Very good. Yep. Let's go Looks find good. me. And everything. Let's find me a chair. Absolutely. Yeah, this right. All these volunteers, man, they get they're right on the uh -huh. right on the ball getting your drinks and yep. whatever. Yep. yep. And they got the scouts here too. All these volunteers. Setup time for the vendors. Look at again, round of applause for this most beautiful lamb and showman.
Can we get a round of applause for these amazing showmen? They all did great, and we have some different age levels here and experience showing, but we're gonna go first place here with the young lady without the halter and the dorset. Second place here to this young man, and third to this girl, even though her sheep is almost as big as she is, she did a great job handling it. On this side, open show starting on this side. For open show, we're going to start with our registered U class, which we got Lane Morrison, Laney Wilk, and Addison Boren. And in our 4-H, 4-H oh, uh, pre-class, we're going to have our, we're going to start with our registered Specky Lamb uh, for our Maddie McKenzie. Specky uh, Lamb is really, really cool in her design. She's super long and level down her top, long and level out of her hip. Uh, really, really good in the way she ties her neck into the top of her shoulder, uh, though she doesn't want to... Here on the 4-H side, we're going to start with, we're going to have two classes of commercial crossbred ewe lambs. In our first class, we need brand Dabble, <laughs> Patty McKenzie, Lupita Martinez, Auburn Moors, and Avery Varner, tag number 2364. In our open ring, we're going to continue on with our commercial ewe lambs. And we need Lady Wilk for the show ring. deck in our open class we're gonna have natural colored wool
Alrighty. Next up in the open show ring, we've got natural color wool U lambs. We've got Sammy Galvin, Lane Morrison, Addison Morin, Bentley Brotnick, Brotniak, and Bentley Brotniak. <laughs> Most arguments I've been heard in here. And I wouldn't argue with you if you like them the other way. I just think a little bit more future in our second place. She, she's a little more relaxed and angle to her shoulder. She ties her neck in harder. She's longer and leveler out of her hip. And when we get her in motion, she's a little bit, she takes a longer, uh, smoother stride. Uh, now that she makes her hip, it's really, really impressive when you get her hands on her. She's super expressive over her back. Really good in her loin, loin edge. Uh, They're starting to line up for the parade, which will be at 11 o'clock. Your Oregon Animal Care Center? Yeah. So we hung the banner back there. Anything that needs to be rescued. But we lease land. Do you know Mike Thomas, who's kind of overseeing all of this? Okay. So um, we lease 10 acres from him. And then our other uh, rescue horses go out to foster homes. Oh. Yeah. Do you have many horses? 35 in foster care. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of horses are they just horses that people don't want anymore or abused neglected abused neglected mm -hmm. yeah yeah so we have um with me i have a big belgian draft um you know belgian waffles so her <laughs> name is waffles um <laughs> she's massive but she's kind of our mascot because she's just so sweet she's huge but lovely um and then we've done rescue since 2000, so we've got horses all over, but we've got about 35 of them in foster homes. Yeah. So the foster homes are in the Turner area and all over the They're state? They're all over Oregon and then the southern part of Washington. Huh. So we'll go far and wide, wherever we can find a good, suitable home for a horse. Yeah. Do you have trouble finding? Yes. You do? Yes, we didn't used to, but the prices of hay, grain, um, it's making it really hard. People are dumping their horses like crazy. Um, so it is hard to find families. Uh -huh. And we're very picky about our families. So, you know, we don't just give them away. Our families have been with us for a long time. And um, 
we don't adopt our horses out. We never adopt them because when you adopt them, they don't belong to us anymore. So if you foster them, you continue to get a tax write-off for everything for those horses. So um, it's a benefit to the people who have them. And if they decide they don't want the horse anymore, it comes back to us and we rehome it. That way it doesn't go to an auction or it doesn't, something bad doesn't happen to it. So that's our, we used to adopt and it didn't work out. Yeah. So this is our guarantee that that horse will be cared for for the rest of its life. Good. But we do everything. I started out in wildlife rehab. In fact, this morning, before the parade even started, someone here in Turner hit a bobcat, and um, I had to run it into Salem to the emergency clinic. And so we do anything. Oh. Ever. So how do they reach you on by email or um, you have a so website? Either, we have a website. <laughs> um, it's on the back of this. So oaccrescue.com. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our website. We have a number. People that get in touch with us are usually people that know someone that knows someone that knows someone um, and they hear about us. Uh -huh. We're caring for two right now, two neglected horses, and we don't know yet what we're going to do with them, but one of them is very wild. Um, we have supporters. We have people that help us financially, especially with horses because they're very expensive. Yes. One vet bill and boy, you're <laughs> there's that credit card. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have really lovely, lovely well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. This is our oldest. That's your oldest horse. She's 120. It's uh, not doesn't cost much to keep that one up, does this it? This one's our easy keeper. <laughs> <laughs> She's our rocking horse. Yeah. Guide Dog Sanctuary in Redmond, Oregon. If you have not looked them up, you should look them up. They are phenomenal. I think on their land out there in Redmond, they've got maybe 500 wild girls and mustangs, and they track them all the way back to their mothers, their fathers, their children. They go all around the United States and bring those families back together. So we again. do have a lot of wild horses in Eastern Oregon mainly. Mm -hmm. Any in the valley? Not really. Yeah. No. Mostly in Eastern Oregon. Yeah. If you get them in the valley, it's because somebody went, BLM has this program, it's called the ADOPT program. They'll give you $2,000 to come take one of their Mustangs and they're untrained, they've never been touched by humans. Your only um, obligation is to care for them for one year and then what you do after that is up to you. So we kind of don't like that program because those horses just end up going into an auction somewhere. Yeah. Um, but Sky Dog Sanctuary in Redmond, um, and I, I think they also have one in Southern California, they're amazing. I mean, my hat goes off to them because they, they take, they just never say no, yeah. never. And they've got, um, so Bend Equine Veterinary Clinic over there um, is 100% on board with them. They support them. So you can look them up and just read about them. It's an amazing story. Yeah. Another one that we're really closely connected to is, um, well, a couple of them. So I work with um, a group up in Wilsonville where we have 13 horses up there and we use them as therapy horses. So um, we have people that come on weekends and we do workshops and retreats, um, mostly for women. So it's mostly like women come in for a weekend and we use the horses to help them like work through things that they're going through in their lives, whether it's a divorce or issues with their children or whatever. It's really, really fun. Yeah. And the horses are great, really great. Well, you've got a great story. <laughs> <laughs> it's year, it's years of you know you just yeah. progress and you write a book or anything on that i need to write a book yeah i really should i really should we started this a long time ago my president um jen tearway of our organization um she and i, I we we talk about it all the time like we've got to write a book the things that we have been through the mm -hmm. rescues that we've done you just can't believe we did a huge rescue um, just outside of Albany, this was probably about seven, eight years ago, and we took out about 35 horses, and we had it on the news, and people came from all over, and we loaded this trailer filled with little babies, and the floor of the trailer fell in. Oh, no. It was, like, unbelievable. And I could not believe how people rallied together to come and mm -hmm. help us get out of this hot situation. Yeah. That was bad. But, yeah, we've been through a lot. 
it's hard. It's hard work. It's labor of love. I've never taken a dime. I've ran my nonprofit since 2000. I'm the executive director of it. I've never taken a dime. Uh -huh. It's just my heart. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. We so need... I have to have another job that'll pay for it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you for the information. Thank yeah. Thank you for doing all this. Okay. This is so fun. Yeah, I appreciate it. And these are exchange students. Um, oh. That's Ji Young from South Korea. So her first parade. And this is Banami from Japan. Very good. Also her first parade. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to throw candy. Good. <laughs> so we thought that'd be great for them. Yeah. <laughs> and as usual, the classic car lineup in the parade. Let me guess, is this a 64? Yes, sir. Ford Falcon? Yes. My wife had a 64 Ford Falcon Sprint convertible. Oh, did she? A little red one. Yeah. 289 in it. Perfect. Beautiful car. They are nice. Yeah. Yes, sir. Guys, you got this one fixed up really well. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at that dash. Those are all... Now, those are aftermarket dashes yeah. in yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but take a peek. Yo, absolutely. We can get out. Did did you... What do you have in this? A 289? Uh, 302. 302. Yeah. It's a high output. Okay. Did they make a 302 for the 64? No. No, just the 289. Yeah, yeah. and 260. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most of them came with a 260. It's a beautiful uh, car. 63, 64. Four. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought he had a 64 Fairlane. Oh, cars. did he? Nice the Fairlanes are yeah. nice. Well, yeah. thank you. Oh, as soon as you came in, I love Oh, you're sure welcome. I like the fact Did you want to see the motor? Yeah, let's take a look at that. Okay. Love the AC. Is that aftermarket AC? It is, yeah. I just got it finished up here about, I don't know, three weeks ago. Yeah, I want to do that as well. Take oh, a yeah. look at that. That's my plan is that's the AC too. Just, just shoot, they run too high. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Should be. What is your <laughs> This car here has been in several parades in Turner. <laughs> is it your car? My dad's. Your dad's. What year is that? 56. Don't you know how to do it anymore? Yeah. Huh? yeah. My dad doesn't want to drive it, but he says we can. So. Well, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'd take him up on that any day. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. My favorite was a 56 uh, Chev. Bel Air had a uh, automatic transmission. Oh, really? A 265. Yeah. Four, four barrel automatic do from zero to 60 in eight seconds flat That's still <laughs> respectable yeah for an old car yeah. the only trouble is i wore i rode it with bare tires because i couldn't afford tires back then <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. it's a beautiful little car i think it's been in every parade in turner for the last several years anyway yeah, uh, I forget when we first came out. Is yeah. like before, before COVID, we got one, and then yeah. there's a couple that they didn't do, and then yeah. last year, this year. It's fairly new, I guess. Well, he said it sounded like it was worse. What he told me. Cool. What year is this? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Hmm.
little Mustang here. What year is this? 67. What year is the Mustang, you know? 70, 1970. And this is 67? Yeah, 67. Yeah, those Regis baseball fields were all filled. Did you go to the one shop on commercial? No, it's okay. 67 El Camino. What year is this Mustang? 67. Must have been a good year. That's the year we got married. Yeah. <laughs> One of the more popular years because it's the first year with the taillights in Dent instead uh -huh. of So it's a very popular year. Yeah, parade's about to start in, I don't know, 11 o'clock? Yeah. Yeah. Love that sound. I didn't do it. That's my favorite part. <laughs> listening to it idle. You got a full race cam in it? Uh, it, it it's, yeah, so they, when it was rebuilt, they built, uh, put 302 uh, heads on it. So they're bigger ports in the heads. Give it a nice sound. Yeah. A little bit of top end power. Oh. And this is the staging area for all the animals that'll be in the parade. There's Mill Creek runs right through Turner. places to eat and there's Mr. P's bar and grill been here for a while center market little game of miniature golf
one of my associates from, from my work. Raising money for Hawaii. Last year I was raising money for Israel, Ukraine, Hawaii, and Susan G. Komen. 
and this year I'm still raising money for Hawaii and Susan G. Komen. And I sponsored the Rose Festival Princess in Portland. But that, Very good. Thank you. You're somewhat of a veteran yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this year we are celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary. 50 years? 50 years. So I'm going to be wearing a gold tiara. Uh huh. So, so how did you get uh, started in this? Um, there's a library by my house, two blocks away. And I saw an ad that says, make a flower that you can wear. So I um, went to the class, there's 12 of us. And I'm the only one out of those 12 that are become that became a vendor. Uh, and so this is my 13th year, and I've um, been doing it since then. Uh, have you been at the Turner celebration before? This is my first time in Turner. First time. It's a beautiful town. Yeah. I love all those flowers. As you come in, you can see all those flowers in uh, uh -huh. people's homes. Yeah. And the parade is just right down there. That was really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a wonderful town. I've lived here since 2012. 2012? Uh-huh. And wow. it's growing since yes, then. Yes, yeah. I'm sure, just like I'm growing. Yeah. We have a lot. So... What do you make these out of? Uh, I make them out of fabric, mostly fabric scraps. I inherited $800 worth of fabric from my mom. Uh -huh. She was a seamstress. And sometimes I have ribbons. Um, ribbons are hard to make because they are stiff. But we this is made of ribbon. And sometimes I had to take the wires out. And mm -hmm. there's more work actually when I work with ribbons. So that's a ribbon. It was a two day. Very interesting. And we would not. Oh, hello. Hello. What's your story? My How did you get into these Raven <laughs> treasures? Um, well, I used to take care of my father after my mother passed. And oh, well, when you. he passed on, I had a lot of time on my hands. And since I was very sad, I decided to do something that makes me happy. Cool. And so I started making candles. And my daughter makes uh, the bookmarks over here. And you know, she was a little girl once, and I remember loving oh, yeah. all of the little hair bows. So we yeah. decided to share our love of crafts with everybody else. Yeah. Very good. And that's my story. Thank you. Absolutely. So we're equine therapy. So we're working directly. I mean, some of our horses have like a rescue story, but that's not the primary mission of the organization. Where are you located? So off of Cloverdale Road, if you think about where Willamette Valley Vineyards is, we're just southeast, nestled against their nose. Hi there. I live close to you. Some fire starters you can get on yourself. Is that a real live chicken? Oh yeah. What kind of chicken is it? The silver sea bread is a showbird. Oh. Is he a friend? Oh yeah, he's completely totally tame. Yep. Does he crow in the morning? He crows all day long. <laughs> Whenever he gets a chance. Keeps you awake, huh? Hmm? Yeah. Full grown rooster. That's a silver sea bright. I love chickens. Go ahead. I got a chicken. He's a rooster. Beautiful. Huh? No, no. Look at the colors on him. The pattern. I know, right? Are you ticklish there? 
your head in a... Yeah. I'll put that kit in the so side. I know. Because he's on my hand. It's <laughs> gorgeous. How can I be there? These, these are the only birds in the world where the male and female have the same feather. Oh, you notice the rooster, he doesn't have the long tail yeah. feathers. Yeah. yeah. How can he be this it's friendly? It's a genetic mutation that would raise it. Yeah. All chickens yeah. are this friendly. Yeah. You need to have a booth of your own. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring all the hey, my all new the earrings would look really cute on you. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Our new earrings. She said my earrings, my new earrings would look really cute on you. Always a boy. Everybody has some earrings. Oh, they're coloring it on the earrings. Do you guys copy earrings? No, that's what they're doing. Hello. Fire starting putty. What is that? It's like a super fumble Play-Doh to start your fires. So you just need to take a pinch of this and then stick it right where you want to start your fire. You don't have to worry about the perfect place in your tinder or anything. Just stick it, then light it. In just a few seconds you have a flame that's big enough to start your entire fire. And it'll stick and burn wherever you need it, so you don't have to worry about your perfect setup. Just stick and light. Cool. And you can see it's wind resistant. It's also water and rain resistant. It's good if you're caught out in the rain and on a trail someplace and need some heat. Or if you just need a fire. It's yeah. like a, it's a quick and easy and it's super easy and super fast. So whatever conditions are, it's got you covered. Very nice. So you sell it in the little blocks like that? Um, well, it comes in a tin. So you can put that in your backpack and... Yep. What's the cost of your wear? So one for 15 or two for 25. Uh huh. And what's, where do you get them if you, on the website, you got a website? Yep, firelight.net. Uh huh. Very cool. You got little, what are these, little... Those oh, are ferro rods. It's, it's like manufactured flint and steel. Uh -huh. It makes sparks so you can light your fire. So you don't, in case you don't have uh, matches or a lighter, so you can you know, light it with that. Uh -huh. There you go. Drummer's been out of the country for a while, and he's been filling in, and he does a real good job. Not to mention, he's the only one that actually wrote down the set list, so we'd be nowhere without him. <laughs>